so uh, we're going to talk about what's it like um, to do jiu-jitsu as a, a big person, obese person. Uh, I don't know what they like to be called nowadays. You know what I mean? I, I used to be 310 pounds, so I'm allowed to say stuff like that, right? That's the way it <laughs> works. Uh, but yeah, um, just a, bi- a big person, right? Like uh, maybe – you're uh, out of shape or maybe you're in shape, you're a big guy or a big girl and you want to get into the sport of jiu-jitsu. Uh, obviously, we have Kyle here. Kyle is uh, a very uh, big person, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, 300 and like 40 pounds, 30, something like that. Right, right now, I'm 325, but when I started jiu-jitsu, I was 380. Oh. So I was a really big guy, uh, 6'5", 350 for most of jiu-jitsu. I've just recently started getting back on the weight loss train, so... Nice. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I started jiu jitsu about 220 or 230, and I got all the way down to like 170. And I was, that's why I was fighting MMA at and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's, I would say, the like big people in jiu jitsu, I would say you're, what, what's the, uh, like, there's not that many of you, right? Like, you, you like, go to most jiu jitsu gyms, they're going to be a lot of people in that you know, under 200 pound range. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think we're starting to see more like big people get into jujitsu, which is good. You know, I'm, uh, I think we went to, you know, we saw in the Dallas uh, open ADCC Dallas open. We saw a lot of like big people competing and uh, that's great. I think that's really cool. And I I, want to see the biggest, strongest people uh, competing. I think that would be really fun. Um, so why don't you uh, like what is uh, your um, I guess struggles I guess when when it comes to like training the sport of jiu jitsu what was like the things in the beginning that you were struggling with the most being a person of your size? So I mean like when I first started jiu jitsu um, I always knew like I wanted to compete in the sport um, and I remember emailing about ten gyms in town and just saying hey how many guys above two hundred fifty pounds do you have and only one replied that they even had any. So that was uh, before I started coming in here. Uh, so it was really hard for me to find a gym that had people even close to my size uh, to train against and uh, train with the, that were near me. Um, and then even once I did uh, join that gym, the other big guys almost never showed up. So it was really hard to get a lot of consistent training in with uh, people my size. Um, so I ended up having to switch up how my game was going to, how my plan for my game was, I guess. Um, Cause I mean, I wrestled in college. I do sumo wrestling, all those other high intensity, uh, very top heavy grappling sports and uh, coming into jujitsu. Uh, if you want to train with these people, you can't just constantly smash, smash, smash them. So really forced me to work on my guard game and uh, really try to improve uh, being able to, be a good training partner and still get a good workout in for myself. Yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be a struggle to find more people doing jiu-jitsu your size that want to compete as well. And it's, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're lucky that, uh, um, at our gym, we have uh, a handful of big guys that come on a consistent basis. Um, but I think to me, I think what it is, is actually finding an instructor that will roll with you. Mm -hmm. I would say that's probably going to be one of your biggest struggles. If you come in like 300 plus pounds, there's not going to be too many jujitsu instructors. They're going to look at you and be like, I'm not wrong with you. They they don't want to get crushed. They don't want to like have the chance of injury. Um, They don't want to, you know, lose Uh, a lot of that. They're like, you know, a lot of like older black belts are like, I'm not wrong with him because there's a chance I will lose. Um, But um, luckily, luckily for you, I don't care about that stuff. (laughs) Luckily for you, I'm crazy and I'll roll with you every day, multiple times a day. And um, I definitely know how to roll with big guys because like I'm not gonna like, hey, shoot a double leg on you. I I know better than that. You know, I'll get I'll get I'll get crushed, right? I'll, I'm just gonna be like, all right, I'm just gonna let you work. I'm gonna survive. And if you make a mistake, I'll capitalize off your mistake, right? Yep. Uh so I think uh having I think that's one of the most important things for a competitor. Uh, in the early stages for development is to find an instructor who is willing to roll with you. I mean, so that's one of the things I would look for if you're a big person that you want to get into jujitsu. Um, I know there's probably something you struggle with because finding gear, 
Oh, yeah. Finding gear is a huge pain because, I mean, like, even now I still wear triple X. I was a 4X at one time. Um, I order just not, not sponsored, but huge sports rash guards on Amazon for like 20 bucks are good, high quality, and they fit really well up to 3, 4X. Um, can't speak to anything above that. <laughs> um, tips here uh, had to find some MMA shin, shin guards because my legs were too big for anything I could find online. I ordered like, what, five pairs? And he, he ordered some through the gym and then finally found uh, one pair that fit my big legs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, especially uh, being as big as I am, like, and being in that triple X uh, size bracket, like, we uh, went down to 10th Planet, uh, Dallas, to train last week. And uh, every gym I go to, it's like, oh, we don't have any 3X rash guards, so I don't get too much merch or anything like that, but whatever. <laughs> Um, what do you use your advice? Because like, I, I get this a lot, right? People will contact me and they're like, uh, you know, I'm out of shape. Uh, I'm currently trying to get in shape, like, uh, go to the gym and do conditioning before I come to class. And I'm like, no, just come to class. Like a lot of people think since they're not in good shape, they can't like participate in class. I'm like, well, it's going to be like a, a build in process. Like maybe you won't be able to do the whole warm up day one. Uh, but maybe like three weeks down the line, you can do the whole warm up. And then after that, you'll start to roll, uh, and spar, and then you'll start to do more and more and more. It's a build up, And no matter uh, how good in shape you are, if there's a difference between, um, having being in good shape and then being in good jiu-jitsu shape right there's mm -hmm. a there's a difference there you know um so what is your advice to people that are like saying i really want to do that activity but i'm worried that i'm not in good enough shape to do it so my advice on that is just show up uh at, well every gym has a fundamentals class they'll teach you the basic movements the uh how to roll safely with your uh, teammates and uh, all that. Um, and a lot of people will look at jujitsu like, oh, that looks so fun, but I need to get in shape before I do that. Absolutely not. Uh, a lot of people have a hard time exercising because they view it as this like miserable, oh, I don't want to go in there. It's hard work for two hours. We'll, we'll be sitting here rolling for an hour after class, which is just hard, hard cardio. And we're just loving it, having fun. And I think that's uh, one of the really big important things. If you're looking to get more into exercise and you think jujitsu looks fun, uh, just go try it out. Uh, you don't have to be going full tilt. Uh, once you learn a little bit of techniques, just uh, rolling with anyone is fun because you start learning how to counter them and playing a little bit of a game. Um, and that even goes if you're a big guy that says, hey, I want to try rock climbing. I want to try skateboarding or whatever, but I want to lose weight. Um, Obviously, you'll need to make like some considerations to make sure you're safe when you're uh, doing those activities. But if it looks fun and it's something and it's an activity that gets your heart rate up, I think that's highly, highly valuable. Uh, rather than going in there and with this misery mindset of I need to get in shape so I can do something fun, uh, go in with this mindset of this is so much fun, but I'm getting to work out while I'm doing it while I'm doing it. So I think that's my biggest thing for jujitsu, especially if you're like been out of high school, college or whatever for a couple of years, uh, haven't been in a gym for a couple of years and, uh, or even don't have any experience at all. Uh, jujitsu is so friendly to different body types. Um, we've got me that's six, five, 300 pounds. And we've got Louis that's 130 pounds and we'll have a hard roll just because his technique is so different. It doesn't rely on strength anywhere near what mine does. And, he'll be in a weird position. I'll be on top or whatever. And he can just throw his legs in a position that I can't counter because I've got the big shoulders, big neck that makes it real hard to move. But then I can get into positions that he can't counter. So I think it's just no matter what your body shape is, body uh, type, I think it's very valuable to uh, come in and just start having fun doing jujitsu. I, I, I definitely think fun is like – very important. I think that was like my number one thing is passion, right? For longevity and uh, accomplishing goals. And this is, is definitely fun and passion for sure. Um, so I feel like um, a lot of uh, big people are scared to roll with smaller people. Uh, and I have this like, you know, I'm, I'm 
also like 215 like right now and like six one so like i'm bigger than most jiu-jitsu people right and um i have to like i want to like just really when i roll with like olga for instance right she's like a 54 year old you know woman that's uh 115 pounds 110 pounds something like that and i can roll with her and i won't hurt her and i'll just go slow and i you know i can you know give her a position you know and i'll work my way out of positions i like to like put myself in you know sometimes bad places like uh position wise or submission attempts and i kind of work my way out of that to kind of make it a little bit more competitive and we kind of just flow around and making sure i'm not dropping all my weight and and this is like my advice to you when you roll with a lot of like people at your gym that maybe you're double the size of, you know, you don't have to go out there and like he said, and crush them. Um, I think it's also maybe good to, you know, play off your back a lot, play guard a lot. Uh, maybe let them start in a dominant position. Um, so this is a good way for you to make like even out the role a little bit, you know, and make it a more competitive role. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Because a lot of times, like, I'll let someone get to a fully locked in arm bar so I can practice escaping that or not me, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm making the black belt, like, no. uh, yeah, yeah, I'll test it. No, oh. <laughs> no, but when I'm going with one of the small guys, I'll let him yeah. get to a good arm bar position to full mount or something. Um, I had a competition a couple weeks back where I couldn't get out of full mount, so I made everyone in the gym start full mount every time I rolled for what three, four weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, haven't gotten stuck in mount since, so <laughs> yeah, it's paid off. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just, uh, putting yourself into, you can have a ton of fun even when you're on bottom. And, uh, if you're one of these bigger people, got a little guy coming up, you're not going to be hurt by them putting their pressure onto you. It's, uh, so it's really just like knowing when to put on the gas and when to just apply the brakes and put yourself into those bad positions so you can practice getting out of them and all that. Yeah. Um, Okay, I have a, a question. Do you have any uh, warnings about like, uh, I guess, uh, stigmas or anything like that? Like, uh, like people were like, oh, like, you know, he's just big. He's not technical, and that's when they when they lose to you and stuff like that. Or do you have like you get made fun of a lot because you're big or like anything along those lines that you come across on like a consistent basis? It may be not necessarily our gym or it could be our gym or it could be like other gyms in the past or whatever, uh, or competitions or whatever it is. Do you feel like you get stuff like that as a bigger person? Oh yeah. hundred percent. I think you should maybe tell the people yeah. your experiences on that. Yeah. You know? Um, well on the making fun of in jujitsu, we're all adults. Uh, if people are making fun of you, screw them, go to a different gym. That's not your prerogative. They're not your friends. Um, as far as the, he only beat me cause he's big. He only beat me cause he's strong. Um, I've always hated that. Uh, cause I do know a lot of techniques and do they require a little more muscle to pull off a lot of them? Yeah. Uh, however, I kind of look back on my past, uh, specifically on the strength you note, know, uh, first, uh, if some of these people spent a quarter of the time I spent in the weight room growing up doing jujitsu or practicing wrestling, then they'd be able to murder me on the mats. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've never, I've always hated that one. Strength is a hundred percent of technique in my opinion. Uh, it's not always the best technique to use. And sometimes someone that's faster, more nimble can very much uh, punish you for using it. Um, as far as the, he's just bigger than me. He's just uh, using his weight. Um, I do think that there is something to that when you're rolling in the gym with your uh, teammates, uh, only if you're sitting there and just not moving at all. Uh, that If you're using that area to rest, to try to get your heart rate down and rest down, I don't think you're doing uh, justice to yourself or to your teammate. Uh, you need to be constantly attacking, going for moves. Uh, if you just get into mount on someone half your size and sit there, you're not really making either of yourselves better. But if you get into mount, start working for a submission, uh, move off to the side to get an arm bar or Kimura or whatever, uh, that gives them an opportunity to move, forces you to become more technical. So I think it's give and take, but I've always hated when people say he's just big, he's just strong. Uh, you have to learn a lot of technique to use that strength correctly. Uh, story from when I first started jujitsu, uh, being 380 pounds, uh, I would do a lot of what I was just saying you shouldn't do. And uh, that's why I say you shouldn't do it. Uh, and of course, black belt professor knows how to get out of that even when you're trying to stall. So 
just bucks you off and subs you. And then, yeah. So. Yeah, man. I mean, what about good stuff? Uh, do you feel like being uh, the biggest guy in a gym, is there benefits to that? Because I, that's something I always, I always think of. Like, I'm like, he knows he's the biggest guy here. <laughs> like, he knows he's like the biggest, strongest uh, guy here, you know? And then uh, I mess with him all the time. I, I'm like, anytime he does a submission, I just add goon to it. So like goon lock, uh, goon slicer, goon bar, you know, I just, I, I, so, but, but the thing is he gets to fight me every day so he can, you know, he, you know, also he makes fun of me too. And I don't care. It's <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, do you feel like, is there a benefit for, for being, uh, the big guy in the gym? I mean, yeah, if you're the big guy in the gym, most likely you've been the big guy your whole life, you know? Mm. Um, Going back to kindergarten, I was bigger than the third graders. And like, mm. so yeah, I'd say there's a benefit, I guess, or whatever. The funny thing is you'll see, uh, be on Instagram watching reels or something. And it's talk about the one ultra heavyweight. You'll see all those uh, reels where it's the ultra heavyweight blue belt competitor. And it's like going against the black belt coach and it's mm. like a war. And so I I've always really liked those memes and, uh, I do think that there is something to be the big guy in the gym. And uh, especially when you have another big guy, it's like we have us three, Chris, Onyx, and I, that we got, uh, we we got call, a few more. But I'm saying like yeah. that we're kind of like our competition squad and we yeah. call ourselves forklift certified more as a joke than anything. Uh, and it's just this great uh, camaraderie with other big guys in the gym. Um, and those guys, I, I weigh them both by 100 pounds, but they're my best training partners. I've had it in my life because we're constantly uh, here and we kind of synced up our schedules to always move. And the other big guys that come in the gym, uh, other times I get to roll with them and then it's uh, very friendly the whole time. But I'd say it's uh, definitely cool being the big guy in the gym, um, kind of big fish in a little pond mm. type deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I mean, uh, I just, if you, if you guys are, uh, like I said, a bigger person thinking about trying jujitsu out. I think it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, sport for for big people. I think it's a great sport for anyone, not just big people. So, uh, but yeah, just take your time, go slow. If you come in here and you go a million miles per hour, uh, it's it's probably you're probably not going to last too long. You're probably going to get hurt. You have to if you're trying to do cartwheel passes. If you're trying to do flying arm bars and and your guy your size, mm -hmm. that's not the not the path, my dude. Yeah. Uh, that'd be scary if you can do a flying triangle. But yeah, uh, one day, one. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll teach you one day for sure. Um, but yeah, um, just uh, come in here, do what you can do, and no one's gonna give you a hard time. No one's gonna judge you. Uh, we want to see you succeed in whatever goal that it is. Um, I know there's a lot of people in the sport of jiu-jitsu have started uh, really heavy and lost a lot of weight through the sport. I know you're saying you did. Yeah, I, I started at 380. I'm down to 325, 55 pounds or something like that. I'm not good at math. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great way to kind of like uh, uh, learn a skill and get in shape. And I, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, is there anything else you want to say about this topic to the people before we uh, get out of here? No, I think you pretty much summed it up. Just uh, if you're ever looking at this or any other fun activity and say, I need to be in better shape so I can start doing that. No, you don't. Just go out and try it. It's going to be the best decision you'll ever make. Uh, yeah, just try it out. And uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoy it when you do. And leave us uh, a comment and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And follow me on Instagram at Sumo Nomad. <laughs> oh, yeah, do that too. Yeah. I'm trying to build a follow and I need some sponsors for all this BS. <laughs> yeah, you want some sponsors. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.